Hi my loves, thanks for returning. I hope this video finds you happy and doing well. As you know by the thumbnail, this video is going to be eyeshadow palettes and other makeup that I've actually hit pan on or at least made a significant dent in. So if you're interested, then just keep watching. All right, so I was just kind of doing a little inventory of my makeup, mainly my eyeshadow palettes, just to look at the progress that I've made in regards to using those products up and moving them out of my house and surprisingly I do have a few that I've actually hit pan on or made a dent in I even have some foundations that I have completed about halfway so I'm just gonna talk about those and I would have done this type of video before but I've never actually just kind of looked at all of or most of my eyeshadow palettes just to see how close I was to actually finishing that product and I know all of you all know especially the beauty enthusiasts and eyeshadow palette lovers out there. Eyeshadows take forever to put a dent in or anything like that. So most of, I think all of the products that I have are going to be older products. And that's just kind of how I work my collection. I will use my newer products, but I heavily use my older ones just to kind of get through them and to really enjoy the palettes. So I hope that's not a turn off to you all, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with the first eyeshadow palette that I've actually made a dent in. And this is an old one, and this is the Mega Pro 2 eyeshadow palette. And this eyeshadow palette is one of the first palettes that I bought probably about four and a half years ago when I really started getting into makeup. And I actually hit pan on two of the shadows. One is kind of like a reddish brick shade, and the other one is kind of like a deep brown. I'll bring it up closer so you can see it. And the reason that I was able to kind of put a dent in those colors, because back then those were the shades that I really love to deepen up the crease and use as transition colors, even to line my lower lash line. So in that regard, I feel as though I did get some use out of it. The palette is just way too big for me to just kind of put a dent in all of the shades, but I am happy with the progress that I've made on this palette. The next eyeshadow palette that I have is by Tarte, and this is their clay play this is their clay play palette and I spoke about this palette before in another video talking about how I used it so much but I have hit pan as well as made a significant dent in this palette as well I really enjoyed using the mattes in this palette I found all of the shades to be very blendable and I found them to be pigmented as well and the black was really nice I know they aren't selling this anymore on Sephora and Ulta I haven't even checked to see if other places are selling it but I personally liked it. I did see a lot of YouTube videos where people didn't like this palette and I don't really know why. I really enjoy matte eyeshadows especially when I first got into makeup so I just never could understand why everybody didn't love this palette but I really loved it and I'm glad that I have gotten some good use out of it. The next palette that I have is the Natasha Denona Sunset palette and I really have enjoyed using this palette. Now I've only hit pan on one shade and that would be this terracotta shade right here. The other shadows that I've made a dent in would be the gold shade right here and this kind of pinkish brickish metallic shade and a little bit on this one right here and the way that I like to use this palette as far as the metallics are concerned I like to use my finger and I know a lot of people hate to use that but anytime I do my makeup I always start off with clean hands but I really do enjoy the formula that Natasha Denona has in this palette the mattes I would say are just a little bit dry but I think the way that I feel about the metallics and all of her specialty shades kind of overshadow the fact that the mattes are just a little bit dry but I do have to say in my opinion this formula that she has for her metallic shades are some of the best some of the creamiest and the most pigmented next I have the Natasha Denona Lila palette and with this palette I've hit pan on one shadow and it would be this one right here this one this one this one and this one I've made dents in as you can see and again, this is a palette where I'm really enjoying the formula that she has 
uh, for the metallics and her specialty shades. They're just really creamy and pigmented and they blend very well. Now, what's weird uh, to me, the mattes in this palette aren't quite as dry as the ones in the Sunset palette. So I found myself gravitating to this one more as far as the mattes are concerned. But again, I am happy that I have gotten some good use from this palette. All right, I have another Natasha Denona palette and this is from, this is one of her holiday palettes from a few years back. And let me hold it because this is the one where a lot of her eyeshadows were popping out but I've hit pan on this blue right here. I don't know if you can tell, but the formula of this shade is absolutely beautiful. I just have to swatch it for you so you can see. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And up close, it has little small specks of glitter added to it. It's just really, really pretty. And this would be a shade that I would always probably add as a topper to any of my looks or use it as an inner eye highlight, just all kinds of things. And by the shadow being so smooth and creamy to use, it's just kind of easy to gravitate to a shadow like that. All right, so the next one that I have is this Machino palette. And I wanna say that this came out last year. I think it did. And I have really enjoyed using this palette. Now, what's interesting about the shadows in this palette is that the formula of all of the mattes was not consistent consistent, but that didn't stop me from using it anyway. I really did enjoy using this blue up here. So let me tell you which ones I've hit pan on. I hit pan on this metallic and made a dent in this shade, this one, and this one. And let me show it to you. And the way that I would use the metallic shades in this palette is either with my hand or I would use a very small, small paddle brush. And to wet my brush, I would use lit. I wouldn't, you know, spray it with a setting spray or anything like that. And then I would dip into the shadow and then go ahead and apply it on my eye. And as far as the mattes are concerned, they did take a little, you did have to put in a little bit of effort when you were trying to build them up. So they weren't exactly the most pigmented. So anytime that I use this palette, I would definitely have to wet my base because what I found is that when, you're, when your base is still kind of damp and when you apply certain eyeshadows, it will deepen up the shadow once you apply it and that's what I found to be the case with this palette either way I still enjoy using it and I'm glad that I got some use out of it plus how cute is this little guy right here <laughs> All right, so this next one is by Marc Jacobs and this is one of his holiday palettes from last year or the year before last it's hard for me to keep up, but I've only made a dent in two of these shades and it would be this blue and this topper shade right here. And the way that I used to use this palette is that this topper, sh this shade right here is a topper shade. So I would pull this palette in to kind of to add to any look that I wanted some kind of cool special effects. Um, it's really pretty and this metallic purple was really pretty too. And even though you can't tell in the pan, it's more like a duochrome type of purple. It was just really pretty anytime that I used it. This shade right here, even though I haven't hit pan on it, this one is a really pretty one too. Marc Jacobs metallics and shimmers, I found them to be very, very pretty. And I basically used this palette as a companion palette. I really didn't use it solo, even though you could, because you have like transition shades, brow bone highlight shades. You know, I think you get a good variety in this palette, but I mostly enjoyed it for the metallics and the shimmers and the topper shades. All right, so this next one is by Models Own, and this is another older palette. Now I hit pan on two of these and made a dent in another metallic shade, but before I kind of, you know, bring it in closer to uh, show you, what I enjoyed most about this palette is that the metallics were very pigmented. I didn't have to use any other kind of hocus pocus tricks to get it to apply and show up on my eyelid. And as far as the mattes, I found them to be, you know, for the price, I found them to be decent. And this is the shadow that I actually hit pan on. And these two, 
did I hit pan? Yeah, I hit pan on this one right here and I put a dent in this one. But the way that I always apply the metallics on this pat with this palette is with my finger. And it just, you know, I would just kind of dig it in and just, I like to put my metallics typically just on the inner part of my eye, which I'm sure you all probably can tell already by my eye looks that I do. But I just kind of find that to be a quick and easy way to go ahead and get your eye look done and finish. And as far as the mattes in this palette, I found them to be just a little bit dry. Definitely not super pigmented. This, these are definitely shadows that you're going to have to build up as far as the mattes are concerned. But for as much as it costs, I think this was like ten dollars between five and ten dollars not much i think it's a really good palette all right so this next palette is by tarte this is the make believe in yourself palette and i've only put a dent in two however i love this palette um it still smells good to this to this day and these shadows are very metallic-y. You don't need a lot of tricks to get this one to work. For those of you all who have this palette, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I've only hit pan on these two right here. Well, not hit pan, but I've only made a dent, as you can see, in those two right there. And the reason that it's those two is because back then, those were typically the shades that gravitated to just really pretty. Yeah, this is one of my favorite palettes, even to this day. The next palette that I have is a pressed powder and this is by Black Radiance. Comes a little compact like this and I love this. I love it, love it, love it. I use it to contour with and that's because of the shade. Um, it's just really pretty. So I've hit pan on that one. So the next palette that I have is by Kat Von D and this is the Divine palette. And I've only hit pan not hit pan but made a dent on one of the shadows and that would be hard magic which is right here um i think you can see the dent and every single eyeshadow look that i do i use this black because it's one of the blackest blacks that i have and I'll put my eyeliner on and after I put my eyeliner on, I go over it with a brush like with a with a brush like this. Okay, and I'll go in it and get as much eyeshadow as I can and then I'll line, I'll go over the eyeliner while it's still wet. I'll use like a felt tip eyeliner and then I'll go over it with a black matte powder because I want it to be super super black and matte and i'll go over it about 50 times literally for each eye <laughs> so <laughs> that's why i have a dent in this one but this is one of the blackest blacks and i want to try natasha denona's blackest black i've heard that that's a really good black but i just love after I apply my eyeliner up here with either a gel eyeliner or a felt tip eyeliner, it just depends, and then go over it with a matte black. I think that is the prettiest type of look. I have three foundations. One is the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation, and I've, I'm almost finished with that. Can you see that? Okay, almost finished with that one. So I'm really proud of myself about that. And then I also have the Rimmel Lasting Finish 24 Hour Breathable Foundation. And that is down to here. Can you all see that? And then the last foundation that I'm almost, well, halfway finished with is the Revlon Color Stay. And I know you all are all familiar with that. And foundations are some of the hardest to get through. I have other foundations that I have, uh, I am making a dent in it, but I haven't quite gotten down to 50%. So when I get to that point and when I make more progress with more eyeshadow palettes and things like that, I'm going to do another video. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments if you have hit pan on any of your eyeshadow palettes. And if so, which ones? I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until my next video, smooches. Whew.